Then the idea that this is what it should look like on that under roof. That's, you should have a deck flashing, and that's the purpose of the deck flashing, is not to be a backup to the primary, but to stop water that's on the deck coming from above. The next finished product, both of them with new flashings, even the, even the one that was done right. Um, so here's one, this is a little more interesting. Does anybody look at commercial buildings or, or maybe buildings, some nodding? Okay, so you know in commercial areas where you're next to a really busy street, uh, you know that the fine sediment that can get up there? So see the, see the leak, the leak on this roof. You can see the water that's on there. You see how the felt's dry, the batons are right up above. But see the amount of sediment in that water channel there? That's what's causing the leak on this roof. Um, it's a combination of things, but it's just something to be aware of. So if you can see all the sediment built up in that water channel, even the moss is growing. And when you clean it out, that's how much junk came out of just that water channel. And you can see how that water channel has a capability, you know, two little troughs there to have the water be directed downhill. So that sediment is what was causing the water to overflow and go in. It doesn't mean the roof needs to be replaced. It's not a manufactured feedback. It just means the roof is really dirty. And it can be more problematic around busy streets where there's a lot of, uh, I think it's rubber, you know, in the street. And I, I don't know, you guys might know better than I, but in, in the city where there's more pollution, it seems to be more common. Oh, uh, yeah, dust. Dust. oh yeah, you guys generate a tremendous amount of debris on the street. Where I see the problems are usually in the dead valley, where, there, where the water is making a turn and then another turn. And the, all the mud and debris and cake junk is in there. It just sits there. It's just like heavy. Yeah. It's sludge. So you can see how much you can see how much comes out of there and what it would look like when it's clean, and and how effective that would be coming down. What complicated this one? And this is something to think about on larger on larger buildings. That concentration of water uh, can be tough for a tile roof to deal with if there's no consideration for it, and it's not that hard to to uh, to, to see it coming, like in this case. This is a large commercial building in downtown Seattle. The gutter to ridge run is 52 feet. So you've already got a big, you've already got a big run. You know, what's, what's a normal home stand from gutter ridge 16 feet, 18 feet, you know, for, for something, a uh, uh, three bedroom, two bath house. So when you get up to 52 feet, you know, just in a normal situation on a straight cable, you got a lot of water running on the roof by the time you get down to the bottom. Now put, yeah, I don't. Now put like 12 dormers on each side of this building that are then going to focus that water. No downspouts at the time to pick up that water. So that area below where that chimney is just sitting there like a, like a sitting duck. <laughs> that area below is getting three or four times the amount of normal water that would be on a house. Then that water is being doubled because you've got the dormers that are focusing it there. And it's in an area where there's so much sediment and debris that the, the flashing, uh, that the under, underlaps, the sidelaps are getting blocked up in the right. So large yeah. yeah. I think you should forget getting the home inspectors to your class and get the architects there. Yeah, <laughs> you know, we try, we invite them all the time. Uh, yeah, there, there are some things, they'd be, they'd be fun to kick around for both of us. <laughs>